Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accused Iran of hiding nuclear-related materials at a warehouse in Tehran, an allegation the Islamic Republic denies. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif announced that India committed to continue economic operation and the import of oil from Iran despite significant pressure from the United States. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov asserts that Moscow, together with Beijing and the European Union, will continue their joint efforts to preserve the nuclear agreement. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accused Iran of hiding nuclear-related materials at a warehouse in Tehran. Netanyahu's revelation during his address to the United Nations General Assembly proves that the Islamic Republic has not abandoned its nuclear weapons program. Today, I am disclosing for the first time that Iran has another secret facility in Tehran a secret atomic warehouse for storing massive amounts of equipment and material from Iran's secret nuclear weapons program. In May, we exposed the site of Iran's secret atomic archive. It's right here, in the Shorabad district of Tehran. Today, I'm revealing the site of a second facility, Iran's secret atomic warehouse. It's right here in the Turku Zabad district of Tehran, just three miles away. According to the Prime Minister, following Israel's successful operation in which it retrieved significant amounts of intelligence regarding Tehran's nuclear activities, Iranian officials have been attempting to clear out their other nuclear warehouse in the area for fear of discovery. This is the second secret site. Now, countries with satellite capabilities may notice some increased activity on Meyer Alley in the days and weeks ahead. The people they'll see scurrying back and forth are Iranian officials desperately trying to finish the job of clearing up that site. Because you see, since we raided the atomic archive, they've been busy cleaning out the atomic warehouse. Just last month, they removed 15 kilograms of radioactive material. You know what they did with it? They had 15 kilograms of radioactive material. They had to get it out of the site. So they took it out, and they spread it around Tehran in an effort to hide the evidence. Netanyahu further claimed that the quantity of nuclear-related materials and equipment found in the warehouse are equivalent to 15 ship containers, a quantity that amounts to up to 300 tons of nuclear-related materials. That is why the Israeli leader urged the International Atomic Energy Agency director to immediately send inspectors to the site. Prime Minister Netanyahu also referred to Iran's malign activities, asserting that the claim that Tehran's aggression is confined to the Middle East alone is misguided, referring to two separate incidents in which Iranian agents were arrested plotting terror-related operations against its enemies in the United States and Europe. If you think that Iran's aggression has been confined to the Middle East, think again. Last month, two Iranian agents were arrested for plotting terror attacks right here in the United States. And several weeks ago, Iranian agents were arrested for plotting terror attacks in the heart of Europe. Yet, while the United States is confronting Iran with new sanctions, Europe and others are appeasing Iran by trying to help it bypass those new sanctions. Netanyahu concluded his speech by declaring that Israel will never let a regime that calls for our destruction to develop nuclear weapons, not now, not in 10 years, not ever. While the office of the EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment, 
An unknown Iranian representative at the World Body's General Assembly claimed that Netanyahu's allegations were part of Israel's tendencies to tell lies and distort the reality. Exhibiting some photographs of Google Street View, today the Israeli showman claimed that discovered new nuclear facilities in Iran. This is, this is yet another false story. It is not surprising as lying is in his DNA. Instead of such fabrications, he should stop threatening Iran with nuclear annihilation. Meanwhile, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif announced that India has committed to continue economic cooperation with Iran, inclusive of oil import, despite significant pressure from the United States. Our Indian friends have always been categorical in terms of uh, their intention to continue uh, economic cooperation and import of oil from Iran, and I heard the same uh, statement today from uh, my counterpart, uh, we uh, have great interest in expanding our bilateral relations with India, not only in, in the economic field but in other fields. We have good cooperation uh, in, in the area of shipping and transportation. The Indian presence in Chabahar is, is very important. If India follows through on its plans to continue oil import from the Islamic Republic, the United States may have no other choice but to place sanctions on the companies involved in the crude oil procurement and transfer. Although India received an exemption from Iran-related sanctions under the Obama administration, the Trump administration would likely discontinue this policy in accordance with current U.S. aspirations to lower Tehran's oil exports to zero by the 4th of November. While President Donald Trump underscored his administration's policy of showing zero tolerance towards violators of the U.S. nuclear-related sanctions against the Islamic Republic, during a Security Council meeting headed by the American leader, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov asserted that Moscow, together with Beijing and the European Union, will continue efforts to preserve the nuclear agreement. Который Совет Безопасности одобрил совместный всеобъемлющий план действий по урегулированию ситуации вокруг иранской ядерной программы. Односторонний выход Соединенных Штатов из этого документа создает серьезную угрозу для режима нераспространения, тем более, что, как многие уже до меня здесь подчеркивали, Тегеран четко следует взятым на себя в рамках СВПД обязательствам, и это регулярно подтверждается МАГАТЭ. Россия убеждена в необходимости сохранить СВПД, над чем мы сейчас активно работаем вместе с Ираном, Китаем, Евросоюзом. В противном случае мы можем столкнуться с ростом напряженности на всем Ближнем Востоке, чреватым рисками для региональной стабильности и режима нераспространения. Развал СВПД был бы весьма контрпродуктивен и для предпринимаемых сейчас усилий по денуклеаризации Корейского полуострова, которые мы приветствуем и активно поддерживаем. According to several European diplomats, the goal is to create a barter system similar to the one used by the Soviet Union during the Cold War to exchange Iranian oil for European goods without money changing hands, therefore circumventing the US sanctions which dictate that any bank that facilitates an oil transaction with the Islamic Republic can be cut off from the American financial system. According to the European Union's top diplomat, the decision to set up such a mechanism had already been taken and technical experts are scheduled to meet in the new future to hammer out the details. Nevertheless, other officials and analysts have voiced ridicule over the European measure, reasoning that such a system could easily be thwarted by the United States through amending sanction laws to prohibit such barter transactions. Thank you for joining us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Yair Pinto. Have a good evening. Shabbat Shalom. And we will see you again on Monday at the same time.